We are getting word now that the White House is assessing what appears to be a hostage situation that might involve Americans uh, right now uh, in Mumbai in uh, this terror attack that began about four hours ago and has already claimed at least 90 lives and, and an untold number of injuries. Uh, we don't know exactly how many hostages. We do know that most of the terrorists, if not all the remaining ones, are holed up at this one particular hotel that uh, the Indian Army and uh, about a contingent of 70 of them have just stormed. We don't have any more news than that. We do know that the White House is monitoring it very closely uh, and the possibility that Americans could be among the hostages. I say that because when all of this began, apparently the terrorists who began shooting uh, on the streets of Mumbai, uh, even uh, went around and started looking for what appeared to be tourists and then started demanding their passports. Anyone who was British, anyone who was American was taken hostage or shot. Um, that's all we know. We don't know much more than that. I do want to get some perspective from Larry Eagleberger, my friend, the former Secretary of State as well. Um, Larry, it does sound like deja vu all over again, but it occurs in a region and in a country that, while it hasn't been at the epicenter of the financial crisis, it has been dragged into it. One of the most successful economies on earth that has also experienced this uh, sort of credit contagion. Do you think terrorists seize on opportunities like that when, when countries, when the world is transfixed by other issues? I don't think there's any doubt about it uh, that they do focus in on these. But one in, one thing we do need to remember with attacks like this in India and a difference in the United States, where I think the Bush administration has been superb in this effort of keeping terrorists away. But remember, India, for example, has dissidents that are native dissidents. Right, they've got right. Hindus, they've got Muslims, and that makes it much more difficult, I suspect, to police these things and to control the terrorists and than it does for us, but at least we don't have to worry about home-built terrorism. It's, it comes in from outside. Having said that, I don't think there's any doubt that the, this attack in, in India is, first of all, it's well-planned, clearly, and with a number of people involved in it. Those are the kinds of attacks and, con and conspiracies you would expect a good system could catch before they happen. I'm not saying that the Indians don't have such a system, but it would seem to me this is the kind of attack that uh, a capable service, a secret service would have at least some indication of in advance. So I, all I can say in this particular case is that it's awful, that it was clearly, it, I think the economic difficulties are a partial stimulus, but in this case it looks to me like it's very much a home-built anti-Western type of attack and deliberately aimed at, at embarrassing the government. Um, we're getting a little bit more information on this group that's claiming responsibility for this, Secretary, Dekan Mujahideen, <coughs> um, that has links apparently globally to Islamic terrorists, um, which always raises the, the most feared question about uh, coordinated attacks uh, elsewhere. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, I'm, I have long believed that there is, <clears throat> particularly within the, the Muslim world, there is a, a communications network of some sort. And I am not an expert on terrorism, by the way. But I have to believe from what we've seen that there is an underlying Mohammed Muslim Islamic terrorist network, or at least something close to that, that... Uh, can be built up if we're not careful in how we deal with this whole issue. Well, the, re the reason as I, I raise that, have said, right? I'm sorry to jump on yeah. that thought, but that the argument is that no, it has right. been it has been building up, Secretary, and that despite our best efforts, or maybe I given the division in our country, that that these radical groups are sort of percolating again. What do you make of that? I think that's right. I'm not sure that the, much of this is direct or is a consequence of our difficulties, although I, I will tell you this, I think one of the things we're going to have to guard against very much as we try to get out of this economic mess is that we also remember there is a world out there. Mm -hmm. And we also remember that what we have been able to do so far internally to protect ourselves, 
must be continued. But what worries me most of all is that we will lose, and I think we did during the election, we will lose sight of the fact that there is that world out there and it's very dangerous. And frankly, the less attention we pay to it because we're dealing with our own efforts, the more I think these things are going to grow. I think it is building up and I think the economic problems we face are in one way or another connected to and a consequence of, not a consequence so much, a cause, or will be a cause of what we're seeing developing in, in the, the Muslim world where I think the connections are growing. Very interesting, Secretary. Uh, so good having you again. Um, please have yourself a great my Thanksgiving. My pleasure, my friend. All right, Larry Eagleberger, the uh, former Secretary of State. Just to 